August 9, 1942, the Pacific Theatre is ablaze with the flames of Japanese aggression. The Solomon Islands have become a battleground, a deadly chessboard where every move could mean life or death. In the midst of this chaos, a group of fresh-faced naval recruits turned sailors find themselves thrust into the fight aboard PT-72, a patrol torpedo boat and part of the so-called Mosquito Fleet. This ragtag band of boys, led by the courageous Captain Forrest E. Ford and his XO Lieutenant Ralph Matz, have embarked on a journey that will test their mettle. PT-72, despite their inexperience, prove instrumental in thwarting Japanese supply submarines, their naive bravery earning them the nickname the Halfwits of Savo. This impetuousness would soon lead to tragedy, however, when PT-72 attempts to dispatch a crippled sub. While emerging victorious, the intense action leads to the loss of five brave souls, including Captain Exo and the boat's doctor. Sad day. Sad day for the Mosquito Fleet. With no leadership, can the remaining members of PT-72 come together and continue the fight? This half-baked crew of halfwits will soon learn that rank and rate don't matter when survival is on the line. As the sun sets over the Solomon Islands, PT-72 sails on, a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who face loss and hardship. Keep up the fight, boys. August 14th, 1942. War rages in the Solomons. On board PT-72, the half-baked crew with hearts of steel face a new dawn, determined to honour the memory of their fallen comrades and continue the fight. The crew, now led by spirited boatswain Francis Vittori, have taken it upon themselves to push the boundaries, testing newly scavenged weaponry, 5-inch rockets and a mighty 60mm mortar. These brave sailors, once considered halfwits, delivering a resounding message to Japanese forces. Uncle Sam is here to stay. In the absence of seasoned leadership, the crew has found their own way to thrive. Each member is a mechanic, a cook, a helmsman, each doing their part for the war effort. PT-72 proves that it's not the size of the crew, but the size of their hearts that matter most. The half-baked crew has become a well-oiled machine proving that heroes rise from unlikely places. August 18th, 1942. The boats of the Mosquito Fleet swarm the Japanese positions, draining them of vital supplies and gaining a strong foothold in the region. Under the strong leadership of her new skipper, Captain Hansen, PT-72, once a vessel of half-baked schoolboys, emerges as a beacon of resilience. Many ships have seen their doom in the frothing wake of our sweet singing lady, and recognizing their outstanding work, Fleet has given the boys requisition to experiment with a range of weapons, transforming this diminutive boat into a power-packing mama. Weapons like the fearsome 40mm Bofors, a weapon so potent that the Japanese fear its very name, and the quad 20mm autocannon, which the boys call the Meat Chopper, an experimental weapon capable of shredding Japanese air wings. In response to US gains, the Japanese have deployed a powerful destroyer squadron, a formidable force for the Mosquito Fleet, but nothing our heroes can't handle. The crew, once as green as the surrounding islands, now seek to prove that they are actually wolves of the waves. August 21st, 1942. Brutality at Bologna. In the dead of night, a Japanese destroyer squadron has descended upon Bologna, overwhelming the garrison and storming the island. Captain Hansen of PT-72 scrambles his boat, unleashing the wolves. Their mission is clear intercept and neutralize the destroyer leading this assault, identified as the formidable Uranami. Coastal observers report the emergence of PT-72 after dawn, launching a daring assault on Uranami and her escorts, crippling the destroyer with accurate spreads of torpedoes. Witnesses stating that PT-72 managed to defeat the entire raiding party before leading the final assault on a crippled destroyer. It is reported that PT-72 used the smoke of battle to destroy Uranami at close range with depth charges. Observers state PT-72 took serious damage, colliding with a smaller Japanese boat in a desperate attempt to rescue men overboard. PT-72 was spotted fleeing this scene with a swarm of angry zeros on their tail. Stay safe, boys. August 27, 1942, The Long Way Home. The tale of the daring PT boat that defended Bologna continues to captivate listeners across the nation. This wooden wonder, forced to flee, the hornets of Imperial Japan hot on their heels. 
Captain Hansen steering his beleaguered boat deep into the heart of enemy waters. Through skillful navigation and audacious tactics, the crew of PG-72 collected supplies from enemy ports, taking the scenic route. After days of uncertainty, the boys of PT-72 made contact in friendly waters. News of Captain Hansen's exploits reached the ears of fleet. In a display of trust, the crew of PT-72 have been tasked with training other officers and crews in their battle-proven tactics. With a squadron of boats now under Captain Hansen's command, they seek to strike a crippling blow, setting their sights on the Tokyo Express. In desperation, Japanese pilots employ kamikaze attacks. Hit but not defeated, PT-72 now lies in capable hands, awaiting refit. Aura's Orca, PT-72, a tempestuous tornado with a wildcat's wiles. She's a war baby, and one of many mavericks on a mission to reclaim the Pacific. Uncle Sam's PT fleet, crafted by thousands of tireless hands across three shifts, is spinning out sleek hulls too swiftly for the enemy's liking. Women diligently drill the seams, hammers harmonize in chorus of progress. Veteran workers riveting with ribbon. Striving torpedo tubes is one task, while another is to braid the wiring. But a PT boat is more than mere wooden wire. It's a timber terror, teeming with iron men, tough as tungsten, ready to tackle the tough tasks. A thorn in the enemy's terrain, these pricks of the Pacific, spearheaded by Captain Hansen, Navy crossholder, nine destroyers, and the stalwart XO, Kenny B. Tremble. Silver Star Shine, relentlessly derailed the Tokyo Express. A torrent of trouble for the enemy's transit. There's no ceremony here, no time or need for it. These speedy torpedo carriers are built for action, and our boys are too. They'll keep fighting, and we'll keep sending them the tools to do so. Go get them, boys. Would you like to know more? Tune your wireless every day for more updates from the Pacific. Captain Hansen, the maestro of mayhem, the Pacific's purveyor of pandemonium, pioneers unorthodox tactics that leave the enemy perplexed and perturbed. PT-72 and his brave crew, a spirited squad of salty sea dogs, unleash daring deeds that defy the norm. Depth charges on surface ships? Why not? The pricks of the Pacific don't need permission. These devilish daredevils play by their own rules, making the enemy scratch their head in bewilderment. To Tokyo, she is a devil boat, a bewitching spectre, a belligerent banshee appearing everywhere and nowhere, a fierce hunter on the relentless quest, a silent shadow looming over every Japanese ship. The orca's maw devours all. Even mighty warships tremble when they hear her name. They're a phantom force, emerging from the mist to strike swiftly and retreat into the shadows, leaving confusion and chaos in their wake. To the enemy, PT-72 is a devilish spectre, a diabolical dervish, a force that defies prediction. But to us, she is our lady. And so, dear listeners, the saga of PT-72, the indomitable orca and her valiant crew, reaches its triumphant crescendo. These boys, our maritime heroes, have proven their fight doesn't stop with the rising sun. No siree. It's onward, our PT-72, the symbol of courage and audacity in the Solomons, in a daring feat that would echo through the annals of history. This very boat, led by legendary Captain Hansen, took on the impossible, a Japanese aircraft carrier, and lo and behold, sinking the mighty vessel and etching Captain Hansen as a national hero in the hearts of every patriot. But the tale doesn't end there. Our steadfast XO, Kenny B. Tremble, earned a hero's welcome, his silver star gleaming brighter than ever. And as for our daring sailors, two found love on foreign shores, their stories woven into the rich tapestry of the local area. And what of the rest of the crew, you ask? Our talented torpedo man found their artistic calling, painting patriotic murals that adorned the docks. The mechanic, with a magic touch, opened his own garage turning wrenches with the same precision that once kept our orca ship shape. And as for the radio man, he became the voice of the local radio station, broadcasting tunes and the tales of his maritime exploits. And as the sun sets on this glorious chapter, PT-72 sails into the horizon, a symbol of bravery and resilience. Their heroic journey, a beacon of hope and triumph, resonating in the hearts of a grateful nation. And so, dear listeners, we bid farewell to PT-72 and her gallant crew, for their legacy lives on in the annals of naval lore. Godspeed, brave hearts, and may your tales of daring continue to inspire generations to come. <laughs>